Hello! Welcome to my bookshelf and today I will be doing a huge book haul for you guys. Um, I just want to apologize up front that this is going to be a long video because I have 22 books to haul with you guys. Um, so it's kind of a lot and I apologize. Um, the reason why it's so large is actually because I didn't get a chance to film last month's haul, so this is actually July's and August hauls all wrapped into one large package, so I hope you don't mind too much. I will try to get through this as quick as possible, so just bear with me. I also want to apologize up front for sounding kind of weird because of my cold. Alright, we have a lot of books to cover, so let's just get started. The first three books are all classics, actually, so there really isn't a whole lot to say. I mean, I feel like everyone has heard of all these books, so... I don't need to go into detail. So the first one is Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, all in one lovely, beautiful edition, actually. I really like the cover. Um, I, as always, got all my books at Goodwill, so it's always amazing to find such, like, high-quality copies. Um, like, this one seems so, like, brand new. It's it's very nice feeling. Um, but yeah, I had never read it, so when I saw it, I had to get it. I also got The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Um, again... It's a classic. I read excerpts of it in like middle school or something, but I never actually read the whole thing, so I got that. And of course, I also got Plato's The Republic. Um, this is pretty standard in uh, most like philosophy classes. Okay, so the next book that I hauled is Trigger Warning by Neil Gaiman. This is actually a short story collection of his, which I wasn't even aware he wrote short stories, so. Uh, that was a surprise in and of itself, but um, I recently read my first Neil Gaiman book, The Ocean at the End of the Lane, and I really, really enjoyed it. It was really unique and unusual, but really cool. Um, so I really enjoyed his writing, and I want to continue to read more from him. So we'll see if I continue to be a Neil Gaiman fan, which I'm sure I will. I've heard really good things about him. Um, and I've also just been trying to read more short story collections, so this is like two birds with one stone. Okay, so the next book that I hauled is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. And I honestly don't know much about this book. I'm pretty sure it's a thriller. I obviously know that's been turned into an HBO series. Um, and so there's been a lot of hype around this book, which I feel like most people have heard of it. And I was just really excited to actually find a copy of it so I could read it myself. The next book I got purely because of the author. And that is The Man Who Was Thursday by G.K. Chesterton. Um, that being said, I actually haven't read any of Chesterton as of yet, but I've heard lots of amazing things about him as an author, and so I really want to, you know, get on this bandwagon and see if I enjoy it or not. Um, so, again, I saw his book, and I love the title. I think it's very unusual. I've, I know nothing about this book. Like, nothing. But um, I know that Chesterton is supposed to be an awesome writer, so I am excited to see if that's true. <laughs> okay, so the next three books are actually children's books. Uh, we've got How to Train Your Dragon, we've got Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and we've got Number of the Stars. Um, all very different, um, but all really awesome, I think, at least movie-wise. I mean, this one wasn't turned into a movie, but um, I did read this as a child. I remember nothing about it other than it takes place in World War II. I do remember liking it, but that's about it. Um, I was really excited because this feels brand new, <laughs> which is always an amazing find in a thrift store. Um, but also, it's like, it's Lois Lowry, and I totally forgot that she was the one that wrote this. Um, she's the author of The Giver, which is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, so I was really excited to get another book from her, and I'm really excited to reread it because I honestly, like I said, don't remember anything about it. So I had to get that one. Um, as far as the other two, I've seen the movies and I haven't read the books. So I'm excited to actually see what the original books are like and if they're anything like the movies. Okay, so the next couple of books that I'm going to go through, I know almost nothing about. I've never heard of them before, but you know, because it's a thrift store and they're really cheap, I just kind of picked them up uh, and looked at the back and I was somewhat intrigued by it, but I don't know if they're good or if it's supposed to be good, but they sounded somewhat interesting, so I got them. Um, we got Andrew's Brain by E.L. Doctorow. 
Um, from the back, it sounds like this book is written in kind of like a stream of consciousness way. So like, we're just getting his thoughts without any kind of editing at all. It's just, you know, the stream of consciousness. So like, what's going on, you know, in real time in his head. Um, but other than that, I don't know anything. Uh, the cover, you know, it grabbed my attention. And so I thought, you know, why not? That sounds interesting. I like unique premises, you know, something that's just like slightly different. I, those are really cool to me. Next one is The Painter um, by Peter Heller. I don't know anything about him, but I could have swore that I've heard of this book that he's supposedly written, The Dog Stars, but I could be thinking of a different book. Um, and I felt like I heard that The Dog Stars was good, but I could be thinking of someone completely different. It's about this painter and it sounds like he's trying to hide from his past, like something in his past or like his, you know, history or maybe his family. I'm not exactly sure, but this painter is kind of, you know, he's trying to, you know, escape his past. This is what I think uh, the synopsis was saying. I don't know a whole lot about it, but it seemed interesting enough to at least give it a try. The next book sounds really interesting, and that is Hater by David Moody. Um, supposedly it's been picked up to be turned into a movie, um, but this book is a few years old already, so I don't know if that ever actually happened and just went under another name or I just haven't heard of it. Hard to say, but apparently, um, society has gone kind of crazy. Uh, violent crimes have increased just like exponentially, um, without like a real reason why it seems like. And so, yeah, people are just afraid to leave their houses for understandable reasons. I mean, you don't want to be attacked when you leave your house. So, um, that's kind of the basic premise, I guess, from the back. That's what I gather. It sounds really interesting and unusual. And the fact that it was supposedly, you know, picked up to be a movie made me interested as well. You know, they saw potential in it right away. So, I, yeah, I'm really curious about it. Plus, of course, the cover really grabbed my attention. Okay, so the next book that I have is actually nonfiction, and it is Voluntary Madness by Nora Vincent. Now, I had never heard of her or this book, but apparently she had, um, she basically gone undercover as a man, if you will, and kind of, she wrote about her experience of what it was like to, um, you know, live in the world as a man. Um, instead of as a woman, like she always has been. Um, and this was more of an experiment, not like, you know, she feels like she is a man or anything like that, from my understanding. So, um, it was a really interesting experiment, and having read the back for that, I'm, I just want to get that book. But apparently this is kind of, um, because she went through that experience, you know, it, it can be very psychologically damaging and confusing, I guess, to kind of go through that experience for so long. Um, so I, I guess she was recommended to kind of, you know, get checked out, uh, as far as, like, psychologically speaking. And so she was, like, put into some kind of, um, psych ward, I guess. And I, I, from what I gather, she kind of stayed there longer than she really needed to be, um, to also kind of write about her experiences about it afterwards. Um, which would be, again, really interesting. So that's what this book is, is chronicling her experience in the um, mental ward that she stayed at. So she sounds really interesting and I'm definitely really excited to look more into her and to read this other book, Self Made Man. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to look that up, but it sounds really interesting and um, I've been getting into some nonfiction more and more, so I was really excited to find this. Alright, so the next four books that I have are books that are all very hyped. So I've heard lots of both good and bad things about most of these books, but I've never actually read them, and I've never actually read anything by any of these authors either, so I'm excited to see what the writing style is like and also what these hyped books are about. So the first one I got is The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han, which from my understanding is just a straightforward uh, contemporary romance, which normally isn't my thing, but I'm trying to be more open-minded and try new things and you know, just read more in my comfort zone, so I have that. Kind of going along with that kind of theme is Me Before You, which I feel like everyone's heard of. It was turned into the movie. There's some controversy around it, but I'm really curious to read it myself and see what it's actually like. 
Um, I also, like, not gonna lie, I just love this cover, even though it's just, like, the pretty script. Like, that's all it takes for me, I guess. I just, I just love it. Um, also, the cover is kind of velvety, which also just made me want to get this book, <laughs> which isn't really the best reason, but it was only a dollar, so I figured why not. <laughs> the next two books are both thrillers. So we got The Couple Next Door, and we got The Woman in Cabin 10. So both very exciting thrillers that I've heard lots of good things about. I've also heard some bad things about both of them. So I don't know if they deserve the hype. We shall see. But I love thrillers, so I couldn't not get them, you know. Um, and another random thing. I mean, this cover has texture to it. Um, the water drops. It's like, you know, braille. It's like bumps, you know. Which, again, I just... It just like upgrades the book to me like that makes me want to get it just a little bit more um and at a dollar a piece like how could you go wrong so there's that okay so the last few books i have are all books that i got because of the author i've heard great things about them and i've always wanted to read them so i decided to get their book um the only exception to that is the first one um, and that is A Spotted Bother by uh, Mark Haddon. I have actually read him. That's the exception here. Um, he wrote uh, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, which I really, really enjoyed. It was really unique, but really interesting. And um, it's, it's definitely one of those books that I want to reread at some point. So um, when I saw this book by him there, um, I was really excited because I didn't know that he wrote other books. But yeah, so... From what I can gather from the back of this book, um, this man is about to retire. He's, you know, he's like 60 or something like that. And um, he he finds this lesion on his hip or whatever, so, you know, his health is declining. But no one in his family is noticing him or paying that much attention to what's going on with him because I think his daughter, someone in the family um, is, you know, having their own drama. I think they were dating someone the family doesn't approve of, and the family's more concerned about that than this old man who's retiring. Um, and he has his own little problems, but he kind of just, he doesn't want to be a bother to them, so I guess he just doesn't tell them. But, um, it just sounds very different as well. So I, I really enjoyed his writing in the other book I read, so I'm sure that this will be a really fun read as well. So I was really excited to find this. So like I mentioned, the rest of these books I got because of the author. I haven't actually read any of their works yet, but I want to see if I like them as authors. So I figured I would pick up a book and see what I thought. So the first one is Everything That Rises Must Converge by Flannery O'Connor. Um, this is actually a short story collection from her, but like I said, I've heard lots of really great things about her as an author, and so I was really excited to find this book. Um, I also randomly like the cover, even though there's a bird being shot at, <laughs> which is never a good thing, but I, I guess I just like the cartoony drawing style, so that made me, it jumped out at me. I shouldn't say made me excited, but it jumped out at me more, and then I saw Flannery O'Connor, and I was like, I guess I have to get this. Um, I also have Thief of Time by Terry Pratchett. Um, I, I know I've heard the name, but I honestly can't you know, attach any one book to him. But I know he's an author, that, that's about it. I also really love this cover, it's really unique. Um, I love the bright colors, they don't quite go together, um, which is interesting, uh, to say the least. Also, it's a signed edition, which is really exciting. Um, yes, see, there it is, they weren't lying. So, that was really cool. And again, to get like a signed book for $1 at a thrift store is amazing. So, um, I guess he's a humorous author. That's what I'm gathering from the back, that he's funny and he's satirical. So, those sound good to me. Um, it can be kind of tricky though. We'll see if he does it well or not, but uh, I'm excited to at least give it a chance. Okay, so the next book is pretty straightforward. It's just a memoir. Uh, Michael J. Fox's Lucky Man. So not much else to say about this. So this is a bit old. I think it's at least like 10 or 15 years old. So it's not completely up to date, but it'd still be interesting to read anything about him. So, Okay, so the last book that I got 
was an extremely surprising find, but a find that I'm really genuinely excited about. And that is um, An Object of Beauty by Steve Martin. Like, THE Steve Martin. Um, this is not a memoir. This is a novel. Um, which blew me away. Like, what can this man not do? Um, so obviously he's an actor. He was on SNL. He's extremely funny. Um, but he also plays a banjo, if you didn't know. Which I remember finding that out and being shocked. Like, really? That's awesome. And he even won, like, a Grammy for it and everything. Like, he's genuinely talented at the banjo. Um, and now I find out he's an author of fiction? Like, what? So cool. Um, I just have even more respect for the man. He's just awesome. So I literally didn't even read, like, what this is about because I don't care. Like, I just want a book by Steve Martin. I mean, who doesn't, really? So I'm excited to go into this one completely blind. I just think it's so cool that he wrote a novel. Okay, so that was my extremely huge book haul, which I, again, apologize for, like, making you go through all that, but I hope it was interesting to see the random books that I found in uh, various Goodwills throughout the country. Um, please let me know if you've heard of any of these or if any of these are worth reading sooner versus later. I would love to hear your opinions. And as always, thank you for watching this video, and until next time.